Hi, everybody. Welcome to a very special episode of My The Asshole Podcast. I am joined by an incredibly special guest today, stand-up comedian. His latest comedy album, 60% Joking, is available on iTunes, along with three other albums. You've seen him on VH1's Best Week Ever, Chappelle's Show, Comedy Central Presents, and Conan. Christian Finnegan, welcome to the program. It is a pleasure to be here, Danny. Did I get that right? Is it? You got it all right. Four other, I got it all right. This I got yes, it all right. that was that was the the six percent joking was my fourth album, and my my fifth one, which will be an album and a special, will be uh, out hopefully in June. Is my, that's uh, we're figuring that out now. Incredibly exciting. Are you you're still cranking out material despite the virus? Yeah, I you know um, I was lucky in the sense that uh, my wife owns a venue, uh, a place called QED in Astoria, Queens, and uh, we were doing over the summer we uh, summer twenty twenty we were doing outdoor shows because there's a backyard uh, until they told us we couldn't do that anymore. And so right before we kind of were shut down, I decided to just kind of do a down and dirty special. And so we shot a special for twenty eight people, and. Uh, and uh, but it's also a bit of a documentary. There's some doc elements to it, and so uh, that is uh, in the works, and it'll be out soon. I hope it's called Show Your. That's, Work. that's great. Very exciting. Love it. So I was looking on your uh, your Wikipedia, and I saw your real name is Fletcher. Names names come up a, a shocking amount on the subreddit. Naming children, a lot of name controversy. Is has Fletcher caused you pain? Yeah, I've always been obsessed. It's it's something I didn't actually fully realize. Uh, I think on three of my four albums, I have bits specifically about names and my name. I think there's a bit on my second album, I think, about P- about the name Finnegan and what it implies. And then I, I think on my most recent album, I have a bit about people you know, uh, making assumptions about me based on my name being Christian. Uh, but I don't think I've ever really addressed the, the Fletcher thing, which is... Um, yeah, it was my grandfather's name uh, on my mother's side. She's from Georgia, and Fletcher is a bit more of a common name down there. Uh, but um, but I was never called Fletcher. I was always called either Chris or Christian. Um, and I, I didn't even know. I thought it was just kind of a Southern name. I didn't know it was kind of a dork name until there was an episode of Happy Days. Uh, the very <laughs> late – for people who are old, uh, they might remember in the very final season of Happy Days – uh Fonzie was a teacher. I don't know if you know this. Uh yeah, Fonzie yeah. taught like I don't know like car mechanics at like the local college or something. And there were there were two nerds in the class and you knew they were nerds cuz they had like the tape on the middle of their glasses and I think one of them's names was Melvin and the other one was, you know. But anyway, Fonzie was asking their names cuz they were clearly nerds and he's like, "Is your name Eugene?" They're like, "No." He's like, "Fletcher." And they're like, "No." And then I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> Fletcher's a nerd name." I had no idea all these years, um, but no. So then you, but you also run into problems with the Christian because people assume you're, you're Christian. Assume, it makes I, no you have sense. no idea how many people like add me on Twitter <laughs> and then I'll go to their profile to be like, you know, warrior for Christ and stuff like that. And <laughs> I sense. actually, I just moved into a new apartment like two weeks ago and I can't believe I continue to make this mistake, but uh, I was meeting a neighbor uh, the guy who lives across the hall from me and I was carrying up a box and he's like, Oh, you're moving in. Nice to meet you. And we had a nice conversation. And then right. We hadn't said our names and you know, the <laughs> proper thing to do in the situation is to say, hello, my name is Christian. Right. right Instead right. of what I did, which is like, Oh, by the way, I'm Christian. And he just oh, no. stared at me. Oh, he just no. stared at me and he was just like, okay and then he just turned around and went to his apartment oh and he hasn't said a word to me since i've bumped yeah. into him like twice <laughs> that's hilarious i you know what i actually saw you tweet about this well okay if i could come at you a little bit your twitter handle is christ fit it is so I, i'd bring it on myself it. well <laughs> there's a practical reason for that i <laughs> christ finnegan when i had my first like aol email address uh you know, back in the Paleolithic era, there were at originally it was such that you could only have a certain number of characters uh, in your uh, AOL screen name, and right, I didn't right. want to say Chris Finnegan because I the only one who calls me Chris is like my dad, and I I don't like it, and so I the, but Christian Finnegan wouldn't fit. And the same mm. thing when when Twitter when Twitter first started, your screen name characters came out of your available characters that you could tweet. 
And so the longer your Twitter oh name God. was, yeah, it, it, this was in the very like you That's know beta. Crazy. Yeah. So the 140, you lost. I mean, you were losing like you what, were losing characters? precious characters. Yes. Oh. So I, I decided to stick with Christ Finnegan at the time, and I have regretted it ever since. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, he has to write some tight little tweets. This His guy. tweets are my tweets too. <laughs> So I loved your your email when I reached out to you. You you were you seemed like very on board for the concept of the podcast, which is incredible. And, and then you were kind of saying this has to do with your upbringing. You're very attuned to human behavior. Yeah, I definitely you know that. yeah uh, yeah we were talking like uh, my my mother uh, who has uh, passed away, but she was uh, she was uh, she had borderline personality disorder, which. Um, you know, which you, when you're a kid, you don't really know what that means. She's like, wow, mom's fun until she's not. <laughs> uh, but there were a lot of scenarios where I would see her in discord with people. <laughs> um, you know, she would she would like filing lawsuits against people <laughs> like random business, like oh my businesses God. in our Let's town and stuff, borderline. neighbors, people who'd like uh. wronged her. Like she was very, she was kind of like, like a, a low rent Trump in that sense. Like she, she, would, <laughs> and so anyway, she was all always in a battle with somebody. And, uh, and I feel like that made me very attuned to, you know, not just, who's wrong in a situation, but picking up on vibes of mm. when someone is being an asshole, but they don't feel at liberty to say so. You know, like if my mother would be yelling at the the clerk at the video store because she didn't want to pay however much money she owed. She, we had to right, drive like right. four towns away to get to a video store because we owed like a hundred dollars at every video oh, store in like a 10 mile. God. It was like a weird thing she had. But, um, I started to be very cognizant of when people were giving my mother "you're being an asshole" vibes without saying so, uh, <laughs> and Did I don't mean to speak that? ill of of the woman. She had many lovely qualities, <laughs> but that was uh, so. I definitely think that that is, and, and I think just also for whatever reason, I've just always been hypersensitive. I have a very delicate stomach when it comes to this and I kind of follow my stomach in situations. Like when I feel it starting to tighten up and I get a little nauseous, it's like, I know that it's like a spider sense of someone's being an asshole here. And sometimes it's me. Occasionally it is me. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you're, you try to be the hero. So when you're, when you would get these incidents with your mom and you kind of had a grip of it, did you ever kind of be like, Hey mom, you know, I don't know if this is really the right move or you try, but at a certain yeah. point, you know, uh, and first of all, I think this is true of, of most people, not just people who have, uh, you know, are battling mental illness issues. Um, you know, people who are going to be who they are, especially if they're your family. There's only so much advice. Everybody's like, oh, you know, I listen to my family members. Nobody listens to their family members. <laughs> family members are the, the people they listen to least. Because it's like, you know, if your brother or your sister or your mom tells you some character flaw of yours, you're not going to say, oh, wow, they know me best. Clearly, they have my best interest. You'd be like, oh, fuck you. You're trying to take some shit out on me. You're like, you're being passive aggressive. Like, you don't. You would take it more seriously from me or from a stranger <laughs> Absolutely. than, than your a family member. Yeah, if you were like, Danny, I think you're a seriously twisted person. I'd be like, oh, my God, he's right. Right, but it if your mom said true. it to you, you'd be like, oh, she, mom's doing her shit again. <laughs> this is about the trash <laughs> Yeah, <or> something. exactly. <laughs> it's something ridiculous. Well, this is great. I'm very excited. I've got some uh, very juicy situations. Our second story of the day, AITA for calling another student reduced lunch after he called me daddy's money. But first, would I be the asshole for not returning lost goods because the reward wasn't honored? I found a Nintendo Switch case with a few games in it at a dog park. That same night, I saw a Facebook Help Wanted post about the lost Switch and promised a $250 reward for returning it. For what it's worth, I priced out the Switch in the games at around six hundo. I like to think of myself as altruistic and normally wouldn't accept a reward provided it's not too far out of my way. So I emailed her. We went to go meet up at a local park, and after confirming the Switch was hers, she said the reward was only a gotcha to find out where it was, and she had no intention of paying. So I threw my altruism aside and told her I won't return it unless she gives me the stated reward. If she didn't offer a reward, I wouldn't have asked for one. But the fact that she advertised it and never intended to deliver means she's not a nice person. 
Would I be the asshole if I just keep the Switch in games? I either return it for the reward or keep it out of principle now. Hmm. That's that's a that's a good 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 one to start with. It's juicy, juicy. Short I, and juicy, very rare. I might offer a third path, mm. which is to give it away to someone who in someone in need or like a, like a child or something like that. I, that's, mm. I would consider that. And I, but I would, I would only do that if she was very, like I would zoom, I would Skype or zoom with her while I was doing it. So she could clearly see, I'm not keeping this for myself. I'm just making sure you, you don't get it. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, or, or film myself dropping it off a bridge into a river or something. <laughs> just just wasting it. Yeah, so, so you can't walk away from this scenario telling yourself that I was just some selfish asshole who stole your stuff. It's like, no, I didn't right. steal it. I'm not getting any value or use out of it. <laughs> but That's where my mind went first, because I've definitely heard of this situation with stolen property. So OP paints a picture here that he found the Switch, which almost strikes me as, I don't understand what situation leads someone to leave a switch at a park, but it's possible. Yeah, but you're right. I, that, that, that is very true. I, I question, I question OP's uh, uh, version of the story. Because I feel like there is a trap. I mean, I'm sure I saw this on a sitcom or something where it's like you put up a reward for the stolen bike and then who returns the bike? Well, the thief, of course. And then you've got him. So it, it's, it almost fits that, but I'm like, well, if it was something that was lost and then found, that doesn't exactly, because that, that kind of puts OP in a morally neutral place. I mean, he was trying to return it. Yeah. Well, I, I am, a, you know, it's funny because right up until the, until the reveal that, she, that it was a gotcha thing, I immediately was suspicious of OP because I price it out and it's worth $600. Like that immediately was like, rather than like, I found some games, there was a reward, then she didn't want to give me the reward. The fact that he tallied up what all the games would be worth in a retail situation makes me kind of wonder about his uh, quote unquote altruism. Right, right. Do you I know mean, what I mean? Like it, it just feels like, because first of all, these games aren't, I guarantee you they're probably not new releases. So they're not worth $600. Whatever whatever you say they are. It's it that seems they're high. they're what you could get used at GameStop. That's what they're worth. Right. Right. Um, yeah, this is topping out at 400. He's yeah, the, the Kelly's delusional. Blue Book on uh, Madden 2012 <laughs> is uh <laughs> Yeah, like see I guess where I'm getting stuck is like she did make this offer and, and then and then we run into this thing of like, and I feel like this happens somewhere else. I can't think of the example where it's like, well, I was going to, right? Like I was going to give it away anyway, but now that you pulled the gotcha, I don't want to. And there, there seems to be a paradox there where it's like, I'm fully on board for giving this to you, but yet as soon as that offer isn't there, then actually I'm not going to. And he, and he says that she's not a nice person. Well, I mean, I think that if the situation is as presented that she genuinely left it in a park, which, which again, like you said, is a weird thing to <laughs> just so leave in a park. Weird. It's so weird. But let's take it at face value and say that that's what happened. I think that, you know, certainly this would not be a uh, an event that works in her favor in terms of how you would I mean, I, I think everyone is is a, not a nice person at times and everyone is a nice person depending on the context. We all do enough nice things to convince ourselves that we're the protagonist of her own stories. But I, I don't know. I mean, I, to me, if you put out that you will give a reward, then you have to give a reward. If you, Absolutely. if you just say reward and don't say the amount, well, then maybe you can fudge with that a little bit. That's but the if, move. Yeah. If you say $250, you better have $250 even if it yeah. is stolen. That's what you're paying to get it back. It, it, and if you don't want to do that, then go to the police or do something else. Like if, you know, but. Right. So I, I, I think that, you know, and I find this to be true in a lot of those Am I the Asshole situations. There is often more than one. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like that I, both people are the asshole. Yeah, or you know, to to some degree. I know that's not a very satisfying answer, 
Well, that could be the answer here. That 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 can be the answer that they're both the asshole. I guess I don't know that I find OP to be the asshole. Uh, that's that's I I guess where I'm stuck. It definitely seems assholeish to list something with a reward, then go gotcha, and there's no thief. There's no there's nothing involved. They found it fair and square. So you know that's that's what you put out there. That's what you agreed to do. So I'm I'm ready to call the person who's offering the reward an asshole, but is what OP is doing asshole is he knows it's hers or theirs. Yeah. Her, he knows it's hers and yet kind of is demanding this reward, but that feels like a fair expectation. It's what she said, you know, it, but then I like what you said earlier. Like, is it selfish for him to just keep it? Then, then this, what is this really about? Yeah. That, that it's the keeping it thing that, 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 makes me suspicious and kind of makes me not want to let him totally off the hook. You know, again, not everything has to be a snarky yahaha move, but you could just say, all right, you're not going to give me a reward. I'm going to put it right back where I found it. And then yeah. if you can get to it before somebody else comes and grabs it, best of luck to you. But I'm going to act like I never found it and put it back in the park. And then it's going to go all the way to the park. It's a whole ordeal. <laughs> but to me, if you keep it, if you keep it, you are on the hook for at least 20% assholeism. I think so, because you know what? Now where I'm going is like, okay, fine. It is an asshole move to put up a fake reward. Absolutely. But is the penalty for that level of assholeness, is it really fair? Is this a yes. fair punishment for the crime? No fucking way. Yeah, yeah. You are, so the, by your own definition, you think the punishment of that crime is that you should steal six hundred dollars worth of goods from this person. <laughs> you know, insane. Yeah, insane. And also, presumably, you know, the, obviously they corresponded on some sort of platform. So it's not right. as if if he just tells her, "By the way, I'm going to keep your shit." That that's necessarily going to be the end of it. Yeah, it seems like stealing, right? Yeah, I mean, and it legally, seems like there, she would have out. some recourse <laughs> to sort of pursue Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And if you're, and if you're, if you haven't stolen it, if if what you're saying is correct that you found it in the park, you keeping it does not look make you look great. It doesn't. It makes right. you look more like you stole it. Yeah, I mean, I I think it kind of becomes stealing at that point. You know who it belongs to. Well, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. If finders keepers is how cops work. I don't know how property transfer of Nintendo Switches <laughs> plays out. But yeah, I, I am kind of dead set on the punishment doesn't fit the crime, so therefore keeping it isn't fair. So I I think they are both assholes. Yeah, I are think you? they're both assholes. She's definitely an asshole, without a doubt. Yes, and he is potentially an asshole. Um, yeah, it's would I be the asshole for not returning it? So if he didn't return it, we agree. Would I be the asshole for not returning lost but goods because the reward wasn't honored? We would agree. Everyone sucks here. Yeah, yes. AITA for calling another student reduce lunch after he called me daddy's money. Bit of background. I live in a middle class home. My parents drive a Camry and an Accord. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. We are not rich by any means. Just my parents are frugal with what they have, and they also invest the money they do save. There is this kid, call him Jeremy, who has just been a jerk to me. He's a good bit taller than me and weighs more than me, too. OP with these details. What is going on? I had to get some paperwork done, had a note, and I was going to be coming back to the cafeteria. I was going to Chick-fil-A, <laughs> texting my friends. If they want anything, they would pay me back Venmo. Is this a sponsored post? What is going on? <laughs> the amount of brands. So I brought back some sandwiches and fries. Jeremy comes over and is like, daddy's, and is like, daddy's money, saying that I'm exploiting my friends for asking them to Venmo me back for their orders when my dad is paying for it. This isn't true at all. It's just him trying to harass me. He also did this with SAT scores. He said the only reason I got my score was because my prep classes my dad paid for. I was like, nope, this is with my money, not my parents. He and his friend both called me daddy's money again. I told him, fuck off, reduced lunch. He got super red, called me some expletives and ran off. A lot of people said it was fucked up what I said, but I don't get it. If he thinks it's okay to make fun of my family for being well off, why is it? Not okay for me to make fun of his for being irresponsible. I was going to say mommy welfare, but decided against it. AITA. Hmm. Hmm. Well, there's so many, so many questions I would love answers to. 
Um, mm. Boy, um, I think I think yes. He, I that's where I start. I start with yes. Okay. He is the asshole, but mm. in a way that I can sympathize with. Um, to me, the asshole potentially is not just saying it. It's the refusal to acknowledge now in the postmortem that maybe he was the asshole. I think it's completely understandable in those situations to kind of just haul off and say the thing that that feels good in that moment. Right. He had the impulse, but you don't like, well, you don't think it's a good thing that he posted this on Reddit. He's asking, he's asking if he's the asshole. You want him to have the realization on his own? Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, he clearly doesn't get it. Or he, or he doesn't yet. fully get it. But you're right. He he is yeah. asking people. But clearly this was brought to his attention by by his definition numerous people um, that he kind of needed to apologize or something. And he seemed to be surprised by that. So it tells me that he doesn't fully get it. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm being unsympathetic because I have had situations like that. Um, you know, there, there was a period in my life where I – would go out. I, I worked. It was right when I got out of college, and I was working at a publishing in a, at a lit agency, whatever. Not important. And every night I would go home, and I would go to the the basketball courts that were down the street from my apartment, and I'd play basketball with the neighborhood kids. And I was like, you know, the only white kid, you know, there. And I sucked. But you know, when I was hitting shots, they'd call me Larry Bird, <laughs> and when I was missing shots, they'd call me White Boy. And um, there was the one two, time the two genders, huh? <laughs> The two, the two genders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there was one time where some kid was just, you know, I mean, I guess you would call it bullying. I mean, he was straight, even though he yeah. was younger than me, he was straight up just like, you know, when you, when I'm sorry to get a little off the track here, but when people have no real institutional power, they will exercise what little power they do have tyrannically. Um, whereas, mm, you know, I love this. You know, when you have people, and I don't want to say black people writ large, black Americans writ large, but, you know, how often do a group of black teenagers get to kind of impose their will and personality on, like, a white dude, a white adult? Sure. Do you know what I mean? And I, sure. so I totally get that. I didn't get it at the time. I was only 24 or whatever. But, you know, they were mean. They were straight up fucking mean to me. Uh, yeah. And... I took it personally and I was like in, – and there were certainly times – there was one time where this kid was like uh, just talking shit about me. He's like, you can't play ball. You can't – you know, you suck. All of which was true. And <laughs> and I don't remember what I said, but I said something like, you know, uh, yeah, but uh, I'm not trying to be a basketball player. Uh, this is what I do for fun. Like what the fuck do you do? Or something like that. And the implication Ooh. was that he didn't have anything else going on in his life. Which at when it came out of my mouth immediately felt like yeah. it felt like a metallic taste in my mouth of just like where did that come from and what am I trying to say and I started to get like my face started to get flush and that just made them be more vicious but um it's, it's so it kind of reminds me a little bit of that scenario whereas yeah. I'm sympathetic with the idea of just kind of like somebody's punching you you want to punch back right but you know there there are status inequalities. Um, and I am slightly curious about the racial breakdown of the people involved. Uh, that's just me. Um, you know, that's not addressed, but, uh, that, cause that does add another dimension to it potentially. Uh, absolutely. You know, so in your story, I just want to make sure I understand too. You're, this is a shot. You took a shot at this guy and it kind of seems to me like you were the underlying assumption you know, you obviously it was an impulse. You're being picked on. And then it seems to me like the subtext of what you're saying is sort of like you're assuming that all this guy has going on is basketball. Well, you know, and I, I, I to defend myself slightly, ever so slightly, I mean, that's certainly the implication that he was giving off, that he was, you know, the next Michael Jordan, you know, and got all those it, things. Got it. He, but, he was all in. Yeah. But but still, though, I still was making a fucking judgment about his values right. and his life plans and his career path, like, which was completely not my fucking business. And, and uh, it, you know, and, I, and it, luckily, I mean, I do think that I'm, I think I'm a lot more sensitive about that stuff now than I was then. But the asshole thing kicked in immediately as it came out of my mouth. Like I could just feel it. Like, what am I doing? Where am I going with this? Um, 
And so that's kind of what I say that it's like, it's almost at that point where I'm less sympathetic to OP. Because I think I'm very sympathetic with somebody saying something just to kind of hit back. But then right. I think you kind of, you know, this, the implications of what you said should probably occur to you. Yeah. I mean, I think it's tough, you know, you, cause you were in college when that happened. So you felt it right away. I was out of college. I was 24. You're out of college. You're 24. Yeah. I mean, these are, these are kids. These are, yeah. These kids are 16, 17, 18, maybe. You know, do they are, I mean, they should be aware. I feel like Gen Z is actually, you know, very aware of what's happening, you know, and at least more than, you know, my generation. Um, but I, I think it's a tall bar, you know, to like enter the mindset of this person and be like, yeah, well, he's taking these shots at me because, you know, he's, he's he has a difficult life. Probably his parent, you know, there's a there's a wealth difference here and they're uncomfortable. Um, but like I, I thought, yeah, I guess I thought another angle on this is it's punching down. Right. This is a, a comedy concept. Sure. So I was curious. Right. I mean, that that's we say that in comedy. Right. Never punch down, which basically means, well, uh, yeah. How, how would you define it? Well, I mean, yeah, I I, th- I think that it's it's not as fun for me as an audience member when I feel like you're mocking people for being less than you, you know, mm. for situations that are beyond their control, you know, right. uh, that it, it it's not to me as entertaining. Um, now, granted. I could make jokes. I could, if I wanted to write a bit about what it was like being a white dude playing basketball with a bunch of black teenagers, I could probably make a few jokes about how they treated me and it'd still be funny. But if I was just like, if, if the if the general gist of the comedy bit was, you know, these fucking losers out there at the right. basketball court, you know, I had, a, you know, I worked at a publishing, I worked in literary agency, I went to college hey. and these fucking, like, that's not <laughs> yeah. funny. There's nothing funny about that to me. Right. Um, you know, and I think the counter argument, you know, which a lot of comedians would make is I didn't feel powerful in this particular moment, do you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, or in this particular context, you know, it, it's, it's not a, it's not a cut and dry thing, but I think generally speaking, it stops being, cathartic comedically to me when I feel like we're trying to, you know, just kicks, you know, kick down, you know, or, uh, right. Sorry. I'm not being very, uh, coherent, but you, you know what I'm saying? It just, it starts to feel more like patting yourself on the back and sort of like, you know, dehumanizing people when the gist of the joke is, these fucking pieces of trash. Am I right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Yeah, I guess I guess that's because... So he's sort of justifying this insult, right? He gets called daddy's money, which is mean, and you're kind of attacking someone's, like, autonomy. And it's a personal insult. And then he comes back. He says he thought of mommy's welfare, but knew not to. So he actually is kind of aware. Yeah, he's yeah. kind of like, there is something... There's something... You don't go that far. He, so he has that intuition... What does he actually go with? Reduced lunch. Oh, is, reduced lunch. Which is funny because that, that, that's not something we had growing up, at least not to the best of my knowledge in my town. Uh, yeah. So it's a very specific term. I think it is obviously more of a present thing. It, uh, it's it's more present today than it was when I grew up, you know, in the fucking yesteryears. But um, <laughs> it's such a specific term, though. I refuse to believe that it just popped into his head. Like, I bet he wanted to say it a few times before this and just didn't pull the trigger. Yeah, I mean, probably. Actually, you know what? I can come for OP a little bit. I think you're on to something. What about this notion that he's a good bit taller than me and weighs more than me, too? I thought that was a strange detail to include because I, if he had followed that up with he's physically intimidating me, but he doesn't. He never brings in physicality. He just says, yeah, that he is bigger. What's yeah. up with that? It's like he's kind of taking a shot at me, but he doesn't quite call him fat. So I'm like, what is he, what's he going for there? It's weird. You know, and I think that when you grow up in relative wealth compared to the other kids in your social circle or or whatever, when you are at a financial advantage to other people in your circle, whether you're a kid or an adult, there's a bit of a tax you have to pay. And that tax 
is just taking a joke every, about it every once in a while and taking a little this. bit of shit. I and you just this. have to just, that's just the price of doing business, man. I mean, you know, great. You were embarrassed for somebody saying daddy's money, but you got to go into fucking Disney World with your parents last year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Or you got to, right, right. got that, you, you went on a skiing trip last weekend, you know? And so the tax you have to pay is that people are always going to question whether you earned it. Tough shit. Live with it. Right. Right. And just resentment that, yeah, you're doing better than them out of no, I mean, in a way you are, you are getting free lunch. Well, that's a bad use of the phrase here. You are getting kind of a, like, yes, you earn your own money and maybe in this particular instance, but like, you and I don't are, believe that either, uh, but I don't believe that not for one bit. Do I oh, you think he's lying? Absolutely. I absolutely <laughs> believe he's lying. I mean, I don't know if he's der- like, what is it that he said he paid for? Oh, the, the Chick-fil-A the Chick-fil-A. But uh, what, where does he say? It's like, no, this is my money, not my parents. Okay, how'd you get that money? How'd you get that money? Because uh, is it an allowance? <laughs> because if so, that's still daddy's money. Uh, if it's, mm. is it from a, a, you know, your pizza job that your parents like match whatever you make at your, you know, delivering pizzas? I, I just, I question like it was my money that I earned. First of all, I right. question anybody whenever they'd be like, it's my money that I earned. It's like, eh, is it? Um that's sorry. That's another thing entirely. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that it's all his money. Yeah. And I mean, even if it is, I think there's also the economy of the household. I mean, I don't know how poor they are, but you start to talk about, all right, what if it's a household where, you know, Jeremy has to go work, whatever, like on the weekends to get a little extra money and his parents are like, they need help. So he actually has to contribute to the family budget. So he, he doesn't have his money. So like, no matter what, he's part of an ecosystem that is just making it harder for him. And then, uh, honestly, this starts to reach like systemic levels because there's this other component here where he says uh, that this kid Jeremy came at him for the SAT scores, and he's upset because his score was high. Oh, well, that's that's right. Classes. That's what that's what that's what the SAT prep courses, and he says that he paid for that. I do not believe that for one fucking second. No way did he pay for his own SAT prep courses. That's no, he owned it. He said, "No, no." He said, "I only got my that that he was harassed." The only reason he said the only reason I got my score was because of the prep classes my dad paid for. But then the next sentence is, "I was like, nope, this is my money, not my parents." So to me, I read the implicate that he's trying to imply uh, that somehow he paid for his own SAT prep classes, which I don't believe. Um, maybe I'm, maybe it's just, maybe it's just bad syntax. Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't know if that's what he meant. That's interesting. But like, that's an interesting jab too. Cause now it's like, I mean, it's true. Cause if you get SAT prep classes, I mean, they statistically will boost your score. So like we're, we're watching, we're like watching a class divide happen. We're watching the rich get richer in this situation in a sense, right? It's like, this is advantage kind of multiplied by other advantage, I guess what's hard for me is like these are kids, you know, Jeremy is being an asshole. I I think it's he doesn't give any reason really why Jeremy is attacking him personally. I don't think that's fair. I understand why Jeremy would be resentful generally. Um but is this so and and then you know we talked about well it's an impulse, right? He's getting picked on and then he's struck back in this moment in this heated moment with reduced lunch. Um does that make OP an asshole? You know? I mean, asshole might be too strong a word. Do I think he's in the wrong? Yes. Mm-hmm. Do do I mm-hmm. think that the people who are upset with him, that that's a valid reaction? Yeah, kind of. Do I think it's a capital offense? Maybe not. Do you, you're saying you think Jeremy has valid reasons to be resentful? Uh, wait, Jeremy's the the quote unquote bully, right? The jerk, yeah, yeah. The, no, mm-hmm. I'm saying I'm saying the OP that I think he's in the wrong, um, right? But I don't know if I'd, f- you know, we're talking about teenagers. I don't know if I fully elevate him to asshole status. But to me, his, his the resistance if he refuses to sort of acknowledge the sort of status differential that might push him into asshole range. If it was just him blowing off steam and he's like, you know what? I could have handled that better. Then I don't think he's an asshole. But if he really digs in and doubles down on it, that to me would push him into asshole territory. 
I really like your idea of the tax. You know, it's kind of like if I had a friend who had a Lambo, I would shit on the car constantly. Absolutely. Like, as a big, right? Yes. That's. And then if he yeah. was like. And, and what he gets out of that is the fucking a Lambo. <laughs> you get exactly. a Lambo. I get to make fun of you. That's the deal. Of course. And so it's then like, if he was I, like. I all my hair. A lot of my friends are bald. They <laughs> talk shit about me that I haven't lost my hair. And I'm not going to make fun of them for being bald. They're, it's not my fault. You know, it's not their fault that they look horrible and that they look disgusting with their <laughs> bald head. <now>, so. <laughs> but I, I just take that as like a that is a tax that I have to pay as a person in his late 40s who still has his hair. <laughs> yeah, you do have unreal hair, by the way. That's very good. Um, Thank you. Yeah, like I think – that that this is what's making me feel like okay yes there's a class element people who are aware of the class is a difference but I think that this insult it like okay so your your buddy gets a Lambo uh, or even you you know you like like you just made a joke saying they look horrible but you probably wouldn't if they're like oh here's Christian with his fucking perfect hair oh I'm Christian bro and then you're like I'm bald and I can't get any dates and they're like oh, okay well that's actually that's actually true. Like, yes. you know what I mean? You probably wouldn't strike back because you're like, this is a privilege. This is a good thing. And it wouldn't be like an equal insult. And just how wounded am I by that? Like, that's exactly. what I'd say this to the OP is just like, how wounded are you truly by daddy's money? I get it. It's annoying. It can be frustrating and it can be, it can make you maybe feel heated in the moment. But right. does that negatively affect you as much as living in poverty does to this kid? <laughs> you know? I would argue that in any honest accounting, his life is harder than yours. So maybe hold back a bit. I, I, and I think he could be brought on board. I have faith in OP, but yeah, I do I too. Do think, I do too. He doesn't seem lost. Yeah, I, I do think ultimately though the insult is too far. It's messed up. Mommy's welfare would have been like a nuclear bomb. The fact that he recognizes that that's bad. So I I actually feel like it was wrong of him to go that way. He should have taken another shot, another kind of shot at this guy. Um, because I think it is it's really mean and it shows that he's not actually kind of understanding where he's coming from. Even though this kid is being a dick, I feel like it it's a cheap shot. It's just not. Yeah, it's not okay. Yeah, I, are you it, on board or I am not ready for us? No, I, I think we're I think we're saying the same thing basically. Um, and there's just you know, and granted, you're heated, you're in the moment, things come out of your mouth, but there's so many other ways to attack. If you want to fight back, there are other angles to fight back. I mean, you could be self deprecating. You know, if you you know if it's true that his mom owns a Camry and his dad owns a Toyota or whatever that whatever he said an Accord uh, yeah, an Accord it's like you know Camry, you can sort of, okay so it's yeah not right, a is, that what, is that what we're calling Congrats. rich now <laughs> it's like wow <laughs> it's like slow your roll yeah I mean there's other uh angles to take other than you're poor <laughs> right right all right, I think we agree on this one. That yes. that was a good discussion. AITA for calling another student reduced lunch after he calls called me daddy's money. I think we agree. Everyone sucks here again. <laughs> I would say, you know, you're not you are the asshole, but you're not an irredeemable asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's not maybe, I don't know, it's tough because Jeremy's got systemic poverty on his side and then OP has the impulse of being repeatedly picked on. So they both kind of have like factors that you're kind of like, well, they're both not the worst, but yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm really excited for your take on this one. We're going to wrap up on this people. AITA for telling my wife that my job is harder than hers. My wife and I have been together for 10 years. We both turned 30 last week, birthdays, three days apart. There's no way that's relevant and met in college <laughs> just after we turned 20. We are child-free by choice. My wife is a social media ad sales manager, and I'm a computer scientist. I was promoted just before the pandemic and now make about three times what she does. We both have bachelor's degrees from the same school. This is all relevant because once we began working from home, my wife saw that I, quote, do a lot less work than her. Essentially, I am given projects and deadlines. If I finish a project prior to the deadline, I spend my extra time playing Xbox, taking the dogs to the park, keeping the house tidy. Her job, it's different. She works 8 to 10 hours a day and is often roped into helping coworkers with projects when she isn't working. 
edit, OP added here, during my downtime between my projects, I do nearly all of the cooking, cleaning, chores. I don't mind this as I like having something to do. My wife has expressed that she is grateful that I don't only play Xbox during this time. Anyway, she's recently been frustrated, jealous, in my opinion, that I work less hard than her, yet get paid much more. We're both seven to eight years into our career, and she feels I've come much further than her. I could see these conversations weren't going to end well, so I always tried changing the convo. I'd say things like, our worth as people isn't measured by salary, or we just have different skill sets. I couldn't do what you do, which is true. I know nothing about marketing, ad sales, social media, I don't know. Regardless, every time she sees me playing Xbox or something, she has to make a snide comment about how I don't deserve my salary, how she wishes she got paid to sit on her ass. Two days ago, I finally snapped, and I told her that while I may not work as many hours, my skill set is much more difficult than hers and far more desirable. I said that she was unhappy with our combined household income, just over 200 k that she could go back to school and get a computer science degree, and that I was absolutely sick of her trying to make me feel bad because she's unhappy with her career. Well, she's been ignoring me for two days, and her mom called me and told me off for belittling her. Of course, my wife didn't mention that she's been giving me shit for over six months now. I'm genuinely curious if I'm an asshole and should have kept my mouth shut, or if I was justified in finally giving her a piece of my mind. Boy, this one's this one's a fucking minefield. <laughs> a lot to unpack here. Uh, I'm just saying it's a, you know, as a married dude who does stand up comedy for a living. Hell and yeah. Whose wife runs a business. <laughs> like, with which allows you to perform, right? And payroll. Yeah. But like, who has like a real <laughs> fucking job? <laughs> you know, uh, I, I relate to a lot of things in this. Um, so I, I feel like calling OP an asshole is calling me an asshole, um, which may be true. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think that this is a dynamic that, you know, has probably been laid bare for a lot of couples over the last year. Um, cause I think a lot of times men specifically, you know, it's kind of a cliche that they're like, I have to work late, you know, like, oh, I'm at the office till 10 o'clock. It's like, are you or are you doing fantasy football? I'm not even talking about like if you're cheating or going to strip clubs or whatever, but it's like right, a right, lot of right. times dudes will just like, they'll go out for happy hour after work and then come home and be like, yeah, we had to work late at the office. You know, they don't want right. their wives to know just how fucking easy their lives are. Um, you know, oh boy. I mean, there's so many different angles to this. I mean, there there is the... Uh, Lily Ledbetter <laughs> angle to this where, you know, which is, you know, could any woman make as much money as you do if they fucked off as much as you do? Like, are you, you know, mm. are you finishing all of your projects or are you just kind of skating by the way a lot of dudes do, especially when people don't really understand what their job is. Right. Um, the I, people who I work in tech, like, you know, you know, I, we could dig into the thread, but I've never heard someone identify as a computer scientist. That, what does that, that even struck mean? me as I'm not, odd. That's not a thing, right? It's I'm a not data sure. scientist. Yeah. It's a developer. What the fuck do you do, OP? What do you do? I'm going to look this up and see if he mentioned it. I have never heard that. Have you ever heard that? I, I, yeah. I, I don't know. Is he like weird sciencing or something? Like, is, is like, what, what is, I don't know what computer scientist means. Which it's makes like me degree. suspicious. If he was an academic, I'd be like, okay, but you're obviously not an academic. And I did the algebra, by the way. She makes fifty grand, and he makes one hundred fifty grand. That's a very healthy salary. For no way is that an academic. But that's what I'm saying, though. A lot of people, and again, you know, everyone's trying to game the system if they can. Like if you if you can get <laughs> right, if right, you can right. get paid one hundred and fifty grand for working twenty five hours a week as opposed to fifty grand for working fifty hours a week, you'd be an right. idiot not to do that. Um but what I would what I do wonder is like those opportunities, you know, I keep thinking of Mad Men, you know, like how little work like Don Draper and uh what was uh John Flaherty's character's name did you watch Mad Men? I, I didn't. Oh, that's a great show. But, um, you know, it kind of lays bare that bullshit of like that these guys are working really hard. It's like, no, they most of the time they were sitting around in the office gossiping and drinking. 
um, right, right, you right. know, for which they get paid very handsomely. And I think that's one of the reasons that men in general are so resistant to uh, sort of women being treated equally in the workplace is because they don't want them to find out how little work they actually <laughs> fucking do. I, I'm not joking about that. I really, I really think that it's like we got a good fucking thing going here. Shh, don't tell them. <laughs> uh, we're making all the money and doing none of the work. You know, but but I mean. The dynamic that he's describing is a dynamic that exists in society outside of relationships. The the person who cleans the 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 person who cleans the office works ten times as hard as the ten CEO. Times. Ten yeah, right. You know, right. when you They're actually late. think about Yeah. I remember Wallace Shawn, you know, uh the actor. Um, you know, he played uh, you know, Inconceivable, the guy from uh Princess Yes, Pride. I love that guy. He he's also a playwright. And uh, he wrote this play once called The Fever, which is a, like a, a monologue. It's like a long monologue. Kind of – he's a he's like a socialist and kind of uh, examining, you know, I say that I work really hard, but what is what is my wor- work worth? Like what am I creating? How, how am I compensated so well for writing plays and d- stuff like that when somebody's carrying bricks up the side of a mountain, all, you know, working at a construction site in the third world, you know? That person's clearly working harder than me, so why is their work worth so much less than mine? Um, everybody thinks they work hard. Nobody's very few people sit around and say, "Man, my life is easy. Things are awesome." Everybody feels like they work hard until they're confronted with somebody who has to work a lot harder. Um, man, I mean, I feel bad for coming down on the dude because, in many ways, our my situation with my wife, you know, mirrors his. Um, that I do do most of the housework or not housework. <laughs> My wife would hate to hear me say that, but like I care, I take care of the dogs and and I do the shopping okay. and you know all the errands and stuff like that. Because the fact is, is that you know, unless I'm working on a show, unless I'm writing for a show yeah. or working on a project, my life is easier. And right. At t- various times, not lately, but I have made a lot of money <laughs> for uh, or you know comparatively for working less hard than her. And so I am slightly sympathetic to this dude's perspective, but, uh, but again, tough shit, dude. If you're playing Xbox during the work day, I'm not going to come down on you, but you're going to get some shit from that, from your wife and tough shit, man. (laughs) I, I kind of feel, and, and this is a little bit going off canon, but I do feel like, all right. So according to him, she's just needling him and and coming at him constantly because his job is easy. And I think the root of that is not the fact that his job is easy, but there's some other kind of resentment going on. And that's why I find this chronology so confusing. It's like, this went on for six months and y'all didn't have a conversation? Like, he claims to do the chores, but is he doing anything else? Like, is he doing anything to make her day a little better? Just maybe being sweet with her? Like, she's clearly like, ramping this up now this is coronavirus somebody pointed pointed that out in the subreddit that you know she has to watch this all day whereas mm-hmm. otherwise you know she would have exactly no idea. That, that's kind of what i was saying about the madman thing it's just like yeah when it's kind of hidden away it's like oh i'm at the office all day she doesn't know how much time i spend you no know, readjusting my fantasy basketball team <laughs> she doesn't have to right. know that what a big right, part of right. my work day that is um but yeah then when you're in the same house all day you're you know kind of a lot of that stuff is laid bare yeah, I just I guess I find it a little implausible that she's just like a, a cruel monster who like constantly goes this way. And I'm wondering just how much he's kind of painting that picture. Like, why wouldn't he ever like have this conversation until it finally reaches this point where he snaps? And then this is where I really take major qualms with OP because he is not a child. We got none of the problems with the last situation yes. where it's like, oh, these are kids, there's all these no. He is a grown man and a he's a computer still scientist. Is a, a computer scientist and acting like one, God damn it, saying that his skill set is much more difficult than hers, which is so egotistical and unnecessary and yeah. ridiculous. The, the way that he specifically said that we got bachelor's degrees from the same school, basically what that says to yeah. me is we started at the same place and I've achieved more than she has. That That's basically what that – because there's no reason to add that information unless you wanted mm. to underscore the fact that – I've done better than she has because we started at the same place. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I, I find that to be a wholly petty move that he would do that, you know? Even though he's snapping, it's also like, where was there's no proactive relationship maintenance going? What is going on with this guy? And look, I get it, people game and stuff, but I'm there the the number of times the word Xbox appears in this post, because it needed to be mentioned <laughs> once. It's mentioned what? At least twice. Yeah. We get it, bro. You got an Xbox. You know, three and, times. And, it's in the post three times. In in his defense, I, I will say that there are certain people. And I would even say, and this might get me in trouble a little, I, I would even say that this might skew a little bit more to women than men that work more than is necessary in the sense that, oh, yeah. Like, you know, sometimes I do think men are more likely to say, oh, the job is done. Okay, good. I'm done. I'm doing, I'm not doing that anymore. Whereas, right, you know, right. I think a lot, a lot of women, and you could say that this is because they have to work harder and they're trying to, you know, they, they don't, they can't fall back on their laurels for whatever reason. Sure. sure. You know, like my wife will keep chewing on a task even when it's done. Just like, why are we still talking about this? It's over. Like, why are we, why are, why are you still stressed about something that is complete? <laughs> you know? Uh, so, I mean, that could be a factor. Um, I, I think you're spot on. I'll I'll be I'll I'll be arrested, but I'll be canceled with you. I have a friend who will be like, "Oh, I can't believe I'm getting a work email at 7 p.m. This is such a violation. Work hours are over." What should I respond? <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, "Don't." And and she, I, she's like, "Oh, I no, I got to respond." And I'm like, "Well, how are you supposed to have a boundary if you just keep, you know?" Yes. And you know, and I'm sure that a lot of uh, experts in this field would say that a woman doesn't have the luxury of just not responding. Sure. You know, that that yes. will be taken differently and you'll be taken as, you know, whereas a guy, it'll be like, oh, God, I, I can't believe I bothered him at seven o'clock at night. Like that was my right. mistake, you know? Right. So there's always those dynamics to take into account. But, um, but yeah, it is potentially a factor, certainly a factor in, in my life. Yeah. I think, I think my main qualm here is that OP, you know, okay. So what, what does she say to him? That he works less hard. And I and I like how you said this because I think most people know how hard they work. And and you made a point about that. Like this, you know, this playwright, like he knows, we know, like, yes, comedy's hard, whatever, but it's not as hard as carrying bricks. It's just yeah. not. If you could pick, you would always pick to write jokies for yes. an hour than carry <laughs> freaking bricks. You know, and I and I don't like that because it's like she's because you know what? You know what I see here is that he's not owning it. Like, he's not owning it. Like, I think he needs to give that to her. She's frustrated. She works a difficult job. And I feel like he won't just admit, like, yeah, you know, you're right. You know, you're right. I, I do work less hard than you. I'm very fortunate. And, you know, how yeah. can I help you? That And that's why I, I, I like, I'm on her side. And I, I actually don't think I'm ready to call her an asshole because I feel like he's not hearing her resentment, which is... It's not fair that it's directed at him, but it's like pretty valid. And that that there's clearly uh, there's stuff that's not getting done, or else she wouldn't be as upset about it. Like, it. It's very clear to me that you know he says he does all these errands and does does all this housework. I bet not sufficiently, or else this wouldn't right. be an issue. I bet there's stuff you could be doing that right. you're not. You know, and 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 again, I this is a. This is I fall short on this quite a bit, but I always know that I'm wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, I make right. bad choices. I will sometimes decide, you know what? It's three o'clock on a Wednesday. I'm gonna smoke a bowl and whatever. Uh, you right. know, and and play a PS4 or whatever. But I know I'm wrong. <laughs> and if my wife gives me shit about it, she's right. She's right. I'm wrong. There's no defense. Just fucking do better. Yeah, like, and it kind of goes back to the Lambo thing. It's kind of a privilege. Like, yes. yes, you did. You know, you picked your career, et cetera. You built it for yourself. But, like, you got to acknowledge, like, she's there grinding, doing paperwork, and you're you're grinding up weed. Yeah. Like, own that shit. Um, yeah, I kind of feel like, I don't know. I'm, I, I, I feel like we're lining up here for the most part. I, I'm not sure, though. I think we're, we're lining up that, that, again, it's like you're the asshole for not acknowledging it and not fixing it. Um, everything you said might be true in your mind. You might feel, but not everything that is true needs to be said, <laughs> you know? And yes. I, you know, I, I sometimes but feel like the, the, the altruistic thing to do is to keep some shit to yourself. 
Yes, that's what I was going to ask you. When If you were going to smoke your weed, you're discreet, I would hope, right? You're not going to be like, hey, 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 hey Yeah, like right? while she's like frantically on a Zoom call, <laughs> like like stressing out or whatever, and I'm just like, hey, 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 you know, um, you know, playing, you know, fish live tracks from, you know, <laughs> oh, God. I'm playing Sprawling Rochester out. 2003, man. <laughs> no, uh, I don't, I don't listen to fish, but, um, <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> I, they, I'm sure that, People who love fish have a valid reason. Uh, but anyway, I, but yeah, I think we are correct. I think it is a, a dynamic that plays out in a lot of relationships and there might be societal reasons and there's nothing, there's nothing that says that this guy has to pretend that he's busy when he's not, but that doesn't seem to be what he's offering up. It, he's just basically right. saying she's giving me shit for playing Xbox in the middle of the work day. And well, sorry, dude. Again, yeah, that's the tax you pay. That's the tax yeah. you pay. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, and he's, I feel like he's not truly hearing her and addressing her needs at all. Um, so for that reason, I do think we agree. AITA for telling my wife. Yeah. I that would my say job is harder than hers. I'm pretty sure asshole. that he is the asshole in the situation. I'm even more certain that he is an asshole in general. <laughs> oh my god anyone who i'm a computer scientist yeah, yeah you're an asshole sir yeah. please we started please at the out. same college at the same time and, lo- and <laughs> it's not my fault she's a loser and i rule like, <laughs> i've been running this stopwatch and we are actually my time is better than hers uh what a dick well uh guys that is the app christian thank you so much for joining me this is an amazing app man i'm uh i'm overjoyed by it you you crushed it you are uh you're as astute as you as you said you'd be <laughs> well i did i say i didn't know. uh say, yeah, danny like, i'm gonna I'm be good. very astute on your podcast <laughs> so strap okay in. computer scientists come on board <laughs> <laughs> Um, cool guys. Well, you can follow, uh, Christian on Twitter, Christ Finnegan, and we'll put the, uh, the link in the description there to his latest comedy album, 60% joking. And, uh, thank you guys. And, oh, do you have any other, any other plugging you want to do? Uh, I will say that if you live in or around New York city, you should come check out QED Astoria, which is the, the venue owned and operated by my wife. Uh, right now it's just open for retail because of COVID uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, puzzles, games, books, stuff like that. But we will be uh, reintroducing shows slowly over the course of the spring. Uh, QEDAstoria.com. Great venue. Big fan. Thanks again, Christian. And we'll see you guys next time.